Hi, my name is Liv Sasaki, and I am the Executive Director of the American Heart Association in Utah, and I am here with Kismet Rasmussen, Nurse Practitioner at Intermountain Health and a Women's Heart Advocate. Thanks for being with us. Thanks so much for this opportunity to talk about women's heart health. Yes, absolutely. We're going to be talking about high blood pressure and how it relates to pregnancy. And we know that high blood pressure impacts nearly half of the population. And so let's talk about what women should expect as they are expecting. It's such an important time for women as they think about becoming pregnant. Um, I, what I love that the American Heart Association has done is focused on life's essential eight. They're the things that we can control that help reduce our risk of heart disease and stroke. So important things like checking your blood pressure, checking to see if you have diabetes, controlling high cholesterol, those are, th those are conditions that we need to identify and treat even before pregnancy. Um, but then following other lifestyle strategies like eating a heart healthy diet, getting enough exercise, reducing stress, not smoking, getting enough sleep, these are all part of a really important strategy that everybody should follow, but in particular women who are seek going to seek pregnancy. We know that high blood pressure could cause some complications when a woman is pregnant. Um, can you tell us how common that might be? It's about 15% of women that have pregnancies experience high blood pressure during pregnancies. And it can be mild and it can be severe. Once it's identified, it needs to have evaluation, treatment, and follow-up for mm -hmm. sure. So while a woman is pregnant, what point should she be worried about You know, blood pressure reading that might be too high? You know, for the general population, we want to have blood pressure less than 130 over 80. That target is different during pregnancy. For now, it's about 140 over 90. So that's the goal is to have it less than 140 over 90. If the blood pressure goes to 160 over 110, that is a medical emergency and they need to go to the emergency room. Yeah, Especially it. if that's combined with having any symptoms, visual changes, headache, you know, so worry, worrisome symptoms like a stroke, chest pain, shortness of breath, any of those symptoms would, would prompt uh, needing to go to the emergency room for urgent evaluation. What kind of questions should women be asking their doctors about hypertension while they're pregnant? Great question. I think women just need to be able to advocate for themselves. They need to know what kind of risks they have for maybe developing high blood pressure, like if they smoke or if they're overweight or if they have a family history. Um, so they need to have a conversation about what their risks are and do everything that they can to reduce those risks before they become pregnant. But I think it, it's also during pregnancy, if they develop high blood pressure, you know, what are my targets? What are my treatments that may certainly include lifestyle, but also could include medications? Are those medications safe during pregnancy? And what about if I want to breastfeed, are they safe then? And then what will my long-term follow-up be? And what are my risks later? Because we know that the long-term risk of a developing cardiovascular disease is higher in women who have high blood pressure during pregnancy. So our goal is to really think about following those women early and, and thoroughly and getting them optimally treated, and then actually screening them for cardiovascular disease after pregnancy. And that's something, right, we're, we're thinking about too, is not just during pregnancy, but after birth and the concerns about hypertension or high blood pressure. Right, right. You know, the national statistics are about one in 10 women will develop high blood pressure after pregnancy, but some of our intermountain data has actually shown it can be up to, um, up to 40%, especially those that are at risk. So what's so important after delivery, you know, when a woman is focused on her new baby and taking care of the new baby is the priority, a lot of women, their own health, you know, becomes lesser of a priority. And so what we've developed is this clinical pathway so that women after pregnancy that have had high blood pressure can get appropriate care. Really early follow-up, especially if they've had severe forms of high blood pressure during pregnancy. We want them to, to have a phone call or a visit within 72 hours if they've had severe forms, one week visits if they've had other forms, and then the usual six week visit with, with their OB provider 
but then the, the care should continue three months, six months, especially those that have had more severe forms or that may be on medication so that they can have appropriate follow-up. Sounds like, you know, how can we make it easier for a new mom, right? Adjusting to this new life, right? baby. It's tricky so. and what we hope to do is is incorporate more virtual visits so that a, you know a new mother can do this from home and not be a burden but we really want to make sure that that she's able to focus on her health as well as that of her new babies. What kind of resources are available to new moms and you know when they're thinking about hypertension or high blood pressure? There, there's all kinds of really great information out there. I, I know that the American Heart Association has several sites that are looking at maternal health and offering tools to women who have heart disease or maybe don't have heart disease and are thinking about pregnancy. Because we know that there are, um, there's been a rise in maternal mortality across the United States and largely it's, it's because of cardiovascular disease, we really need to be able to have those kinds of tools available for, for women. At Intermountain Health, we're also, we've developed a fact sheet about high blood pressure in pregnancy as well. So we need to just continue to partner together, healthcare organizations and national organizations so that we can get information to women, especially those who are vulnerable, um, who may not have access to care or access to these kind, this kind of information. Yeah, absolutely. Well, thank you for your time, Kismet. It's been wonderful chatting with you today. Thank you, I really appreciate the time.